Hey everybody, Drew Nolet here, Director of Student Ministries at Cobb Prairie Community Church in Lenexa, Kansas. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. I hope you've all enjoyed the weather. It's been warm, so maybe I hope you guys got some time either, you know, swimming in the lake or just a pool or just outside, uh, doing things that'll help you stay cool. Um, I hope you've uh, started to get excited about school as that starts to come into the picture, even though you may may not know what that's gonna look like. Um, for a lot of you students, it's exciting because you finally get to see some of those friends that you haven't in a long time. Uh, you have that opportunity to just kind of go out and do your thing. Um, last week, uh, we finished a series called Squad Up. Um, we talked about how we're supposed to have each other's back. We're all part of God's squad. How we can all be there for each other. We're supposed to, you know, watch out for one another. This week, we're gonna start a series called Stretch, a series about spiritual habits. And this week, we're gonna talk about how we can stretch our faith with a commitment. How many of you have ever been sore after working out the next morning? Woke up and you're just like, oh, my body. I tell you, I certainly have. But I can tell you one trick that I've found. I'm not saying this will completely take away being sore, I'm not saying any of that. But what I can tell you is when you stretch before you work out, it helps your muscles. It makes you less sore because it makes those muscles more flexible when you work out with them. Here's the thing though. Have you ever met someone who works out and they're never sore after it? I have, and it drives me crazy. But the fact of it is, is some people are just born more flexible. There's some people, some things I see people do and then I think about and I'm like, yeah, no way my body could ever bend that way. But here's the thing. I say, no way my body could ever bend that way. But, truth is, with practice, my body can become more flexible. Here's the thing though. To do that, I need to stretch. To stretch my muscles. Stretching is hard. Sometimes it's painful. But with commitment, it becomes easier. And in fact, it might improve your health. Here's the thing. Here's some things that stretching helps. First off, headaches. Did you know that? This is all stuff that I've, I've researched and looked into. One is headaches. Uh, it helps increase the blood flow to your brain and can help with headaches. Two, if you're stressed, it helps relax your muscles and just be able to breathe in more and out more and just help you out with that. Third, helps with your sl slouching of your shoulders. If you slouch your shoulders, um, Stretching helps because it can help strengthen your core muscles and your back muscles, which helps you sit up straight more, helps the slouching and sort of stuff. And lastly, something that was like crazy to me is gas. Stretching can help with gas. Now let's take a minute. Let's look at our faith now. Question for you. If faith was a muscle, how far could you stretch with yours? Could you reach to your knees, your toes, even farther? Just like our body, our faith grows when we stretch it. And one of those things to stretching that can help us, and it only works when we do it, is when we commit. And scripture shows us so many ways that we can stretch our faith. Now here's the thing. Let's take a look at some people who committed and stretched their faith. Let's talk with somebody that I've talked about in our last series and some series before. Um, the writer of Ephesians, um, also the writer of Romans, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Paul. Think about Paul's life. He was a Christian killer. His main goal was to kill, hunt, all of that with Christians. But what he ended up doing was Jesus changed his life. He made a commitment to them. He ended up writing a lot of the New Testament. A lot of the New Testament is the letters um, that Paul wrote. He is a very well-known Christian leader. Again, as I said, one of those was Romans. We're going to talk about when he wrote Romans, his goal was to show that salvation was through Jesus. Now, one of those passages that we're going to read is Romans chapter 5, 6 through 8. Romans chapter 5, 6 through 8 says, For while you were weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even die. 
But God shows his love for all of us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul wrote Romans to tell the people of Rome a huge part that Jesus came and he could save us from our sins. He was there, he was our salvation. He came to show us that it was for eternity. But he also showed us it was for right now. And because of a commitment he made, he did a lot of that. Another pair of guys that we can talk about is Peter and Andrew. Now in Matthew 4, 18 through 20, um, this is when Pete, Jesus calls his first disciples, which are Peter and Andrew, two fishermen who are out in the water fishing. And Jesus calls them and says, hey, come with me and I'll make you fishers of men. They dropped everything and went with Jesus, which is crazy to me because this guy is, what, a stranger? They've never met him before and he just comes and says, hey, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So crazy. But they decided to commit. And when they did, they became apostles of the early church Peter is another very, very famous Christian. Um, they did so many good things. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have committed your lives to Jesus. I hope that a lot of you have. And even if you have, there may be some of you who are kind of like, well, I have, but have I really committed? Now, here's the thing. If you want to stretch your faith, you want to get better in your faith, one of those ways to do that is to fully commit to Jesus. Give your life to him and say, here, I'm following you. Be like Paul, who shifts and changes his life to become a great leader in the church. Or Peter and Andrew, who dropped where they, what they dropped, where they were right away and followed Jesus and ended up doing great things for the church. And as they walked and went, they continued to stretch their faith every time, every day. Now, I challenge you to really think about committing. It's an amazing thing. I've done it in my life, and I'm extremely happy. It's not easy. I'm not saying that. But I'm extremely happy with where I'm at and how I'm stretching my faith. And today, I truly stretch it with everything I do, learning new things daily when I stretch my faith. I hope you decide to do that. Here's the thing. If you guys choose to commit, and you're like, well, now I'm committed, what's next? I would love to talk to you about that. Reach out to me anytime. Uh, let's talk. Let's find ways to stretch your faith, whatever that may be. Um, I have an opportunity that I want to tell you about, though. Starting Wednesday, September 2nd, uh, Miss Kim, Miss Ann, and I are going to be leading a Bible study on spiritual disciplines. Now, spiritual disciplines are all different ways to look into and have the opportunity to stretch your faith. They help you grow your faith, they help you work in your faith, and I truly hope that you're willing and want to get involved in those. The Bible study is gonna be called Feed the Dog. If you're interested, one, you can reach out to me. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions you had, I'd love to talk. Secondly, or you can go to comprairie.org slash feed the dog, there's information on it. It's gonna be a great series. We are starting this coming Wednesday, September 2nd, so if you're looking into it and wanna join, jump on that quick, look into it. It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be awesome. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Enjoy the weather outside, even though it's warm. Here soon, we're not gonna have warm weather. It's gonna get cold, and you're gonna miss this warm weather. So take your time and enjoy it while you can. Have a blessed week and a blessed day.